it is tempting to make an astronomical sketch just like an ordinary still life and let your inspiration of the moment guide you. But contrary to a painting, which is indeed a result of your inspiration, an astronomical sketch also has a great scientific value and therefore it has to be as accurate as possible. In this video I'm going to show you some techniques which allow you to obtain this maximum accuracy. Please leave this beautiful nebula or star cluster or galaxy which will be the protagonist of your drawing. Leave it be for a moment and concentrate on the background stars because they will contribute just as much to the overall result as the object itself. When you're looking through a telescope and see those hundreds of twinkling stars you may feel a bit dazzled and probably you'd prefer to skip most of them and concentrate on the main feature. But don't. You'd be amazed how much the background contributes to the overall result and what's more important, the background will be of great help to sketch the object itself. Suppose that this is your telescope's view of the Pleiades, the famous star cluster in Taurus. Instinctively you're going to draw star group per star group and so work your way through the image. And of course you're going to draw the four main stars first on site, then attach the bright stars near to it. And of course you're going to draw this beautiful string of stars in one and the same stroke as well. But if you do this, your sketch will never really be accurate. A one millimeter error in the position of a star will already give you the feeling that something's not quite right with the result compared to the telescope image. And it is more than likely that when you've worked your way around the image, the last stars that you've drawn will not agree with the first ones. In the end, you'll spend more time fiddling and trying to get everything right than if you stick to the correct technique, which seems too elaborate at first, but which will eventually save you a lot of time and give you the best result. Here's where our clock, our 12 reference markers, comes in. Of course you can't see this clock through your telescope, but try to imagine that it's there. First of all, we're going to choose at least three reference stars near the edge of the field of view. It doesn't matter if you have to move the object itself a bit out of centre, the reference stars are more important. Especially when you haven't got a fully automated telescope, these reference stars will help you put the image back exactly where it was when you started your sketch. In this particular case, I've chosen one fairly bright star just past 5 o'clock, one just past 11 and one smaller star just past 2. Once we've decided to feel the view, we're not going to change it anymore. Next, we're going to choose the first other star to draw and make sure that it's a star with an easy reference. I've chosen the bottom right star of the main rectangle because it's between one third and halfway the line from the first reference star and 12 o'clock. Then I'm going to draw the bottom left star which lies almost exactly on the line that goes from reference star number 3 to the star that we've just drawn, about one third of the distance further. We can cross-check the position of this last star because it lies exactly halfway on the line that goes from 5 to 10 o'clock. Always cross-check every star that you've drawn with as many references as possible. The top right star lies halfway on the line between star number 2 and 1 o'clock, and so on. Remember to always cross-check across the entire field of view. Never work on one part of the image alone. Always use other references and jump from one part of the field to a completely different part. This way the image will always remain coherent and the errors in the positions of the stars are reduced to a minimum. That's as far as the stars are concerned. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we sketch the details and the object itself, of course.